Hello, Commander. Welcome to the Space Shuttle Mission. Please log in to Mission Control. Then you may start the mission at any time. Good luck. This is the Man 85 Let's Play Space Shuttle Mission Simulator. Uh, this video is going to replace all the older videos because the older videos are crappy. So, clean slate. You can tell the quality is a lot better. I've actually got Snagit for the computer so I can grab my screen and uh, record in better quality. Uh, this is about a, the best quality that I can possibly find. That's a free video capture. So, anyway, so um, because I'm going to be deleting the old videos, I have to recap. Um, there's a panel left one and left two, uh, front six, which is there in gold, and T button to fast forward. The time skip F11 will take you to the uh, Mission Control, F4, F1 will take you outside. Communication number two, activate the commander's communication system. Overhead panel five, and we need to change the communication mode dial box box. Right click cycle dials to the clockwise, left to counter switches to on. Columbia, this is on control. Do you read? Columbia, loud and clear. Over. Copy that. Columbia, out. Commander's headset is online. So, so this is the cockpit. F3 to go to the cockpit. F2 to go to the last panel you were just at. To select a panel, you right click to freeze the camera, and then you highlight over the panel you want in orange or yellow. And, uh, left click and you're there. Alright, COM 3, activate the pilot communication system, overhead panel 9, switch it to Vox Vox, throw the five primary switches. right hand corner is the uh, counter display for the time, the shuttle we're on, the mission we're on, how many frames per second, and what communication number we're on. Bottom of the screen will show up any missions. Ready for a board advisory jet. Over. Houston, Columbia, we confirm. The bottom of the screen will show up on things that I have that we have to do. Right push buttons, slow switches, whatever. Because we're playing on this easiest difficulty, Houston's going to tell us what to do and show us with arrows of where all the switches are. This is off control. Give me comment, Jack. CDR. Roger. PLT. Copy that. And here's some here's the stats from Mission Control. This is on control. Side hatches secure. Columbia, copy that. Alright, the hatch is secure. So, but anyway, um, I have to scrub the older videos because they're crap. This is off control. Rose, grab the vent. Cap and vent to inhibit. Roger. Uh, as you guys can tell, I'm not going to talk over Houston, so. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Um, this. This LP is probably going to be the hardest, as far as technological-wise, that I've ever done, a.k.a. the second one I've done. Recording Splinter Cell is not that hard, so it's like, 
just point the camera and click it. This one I have to record. Flight control, Columbia. Captain pressure, now. Over. Flight control, copy that. Alright, that was the uh, cabin, cabin vent isolation valve switch and the primary vent for the cabin so we can start pressurizing it to check for leaks. And the beeping is the master alarm switch, which is located on F4. Panel at forward four. Uh, cabin valves are located on L2. This first mission, I'll try to tell you what everything we need to do. The next couple of missions, I'm just going to assume everybody can just read and follow along. IMU alignment complete. We show 28 degrees 36 minutes 30.32 seconds north latitude and 80 degrees 36 minutes. 14.88 seconds west longitude. Columbia, over. Wait the sound, Columbia. The sound boiler pressure on. Roger, pressure on boiler. Alright, pilot just confirmed our IMU alignment is correct. T minus 50 minutes. Switching to boiler pressure to turn all the switches on. Right panel number two, which is on the pilot side. This is where the uh, main propulsion and APU switches are located. There are the boiler. Light control. We confirm boiler power on. Over. Roger that. Columbia. Out. This is where the uh, main propulsion and APU switches are located. There are the boilers. Uh, center power. The N2 supplies. This is on control. Oh, cabin van. Over. Alright, so now we need to close the cabin vent again. Light control Columbia. Cabin vent complete. Over. Hey, copy, Columbia. Alright. Let's get this done over with already. T button to back up. This is on control. Activate backup flight system. Copy that. Backup flight system to enable. Uh, it's on, located on the center panel, number three, uh, right in the middle of the floor. And, uh, we have to pull up the left keypad, which, uh, the keypads can be brought up at the center screen with the left shift. Light control ops one to the FS complete. Columbia, wait the stop. And uh, the right keypad with the uh, right shift, but you have to be at F7, which is that panel right there with the six black and green uh, computer screens. The left pad's for the commander, the right is for the pilot. This is on control. Oh, grab the vent. We copy the vent to enable. Switching the Switches around for a cabin vent to verify both that the vents will don't leak, that the isolation valve doesn't leak, and that the cabin doesn't leak. That's what all these cabin switches are for. Light control, Columbia. Cabin vent, check complete. Over. Columbia, please copy. Alright, the pressurization is complete. Check test complete. This is on control. Load ops. One. Over. Roger. Ops. One. Alright, now we get to the good stuff. Load ops one. The uh, computer information and flight program for ascent profile. We actually get to start talking about going into space now and it'll show up, because we're using the right keypad, it'll show up on the pilot's... Um, one, zero, one, complete. It'll show up on the pilot side of the screen. We also have to load Spec Program 99 Pro. So now you see the, uh, the different arcs on the monitors to show uh, the, the different parts of the ascent profile. The main one we're worried about is the curve. Now we have to verify the Ops 1 for the commander. 
We confirm. Like when ordered to OPS one. Hey, copy, Columbia. T button. Go for the propulsion system power off. Columbia, Roger. A propulsion system. The switches, uh, right panel number two, uh, hydrogen isolation valve A for the left, center, and right engines, paramatics for the right the isolation valves, and all six power switches for AC1, 2, and 3 on the left, center, and right. This is Columbia. We confirm a propulsion system to enable. Copy that, Columbia. Advisory check. Roger, check. Columbia, Houston, Roger. Abort advisory check. Uh, panel F6 to view the light and then to clear caution and warning memory, verify no unexpected errors. The button is right there. Center panel 3. And the sun's coming up. Here we go. External view and map ready. <coughs> it's at those moments where you notice the really bad quality of the recording, but this is the best size that I'm going to be able to get without having to spend money. So. This is on control. T minus nine minutes and hold. Columbia, copy that. Out. Now we need to set the event timer for the GPC, Central Processing Computer, Ground Processing Computer, General Purpose Computer, David, oh my goodness. I'm a NASA freak and I didn't remember that. Um, so yeah, we've sent the uh, clock to the 9 minute hold time, and there's the pickup switch to turn the clock down to the countdown. So, when we pick up the clock, the Columbia will be in control of the countdown. Uh, we're going to fast travel. As you can see, the frames per second are, are speeding up, and the sun's coming up. Give me counter check. Confirm for the launch. Hey, load manager. Go for launch. Shuttle oh, engineer. Looking good. Weather? We confirm. Go for launch. Safety mission and insurance? Yeah, go for launch. CDR? Roger. PLT? Copy that. Directory is go. Columbia, this is on control. Present gap down. Copy that. Roger. Event time activated. And that will activate the event timer and start the the last nine minutes of the countdown. Oh, we got loose. We got loose guys now. Yeah, kick butt. That little heads up display in that clear uh, casing um, is only used for landing, but I turn it on whenever I want to, because at least for at launch time, so we can at least see how high up in the sky we are, because it goes by. This is on control. The track crew access on active. We confirm. Go for APU. Please start. Go for APU free star. Panel R1. Make sure the three uh, ESS bus sources are all switched to on. Um, and then we need to check the uh, R2 panel for APU fuel intake. 
uh, well, first the center power. Light control, Columbia. ATU, free start complete. Columbia, wait the stop. Oh, that's right. You gotta make sure they're closed before you turn center power on. That's right. I'm jumping ahead of myself. I, uh, this episode has been taking at least a week to perfect with all the different audio syncing problems. And, um, uh, it's just. <clears throat> I just want to get it on YouTube and just hurry up and get done with this. This is off control. Go for APU start. We copy. Go for APU start. Here we go. Now we turn all the switches on we just saw. Right panel number two. We need to make sure that the APUs are ready to fire. We have to make sure the fuel APU fuel intakes are open. We are ready to go. And then the, the actual APU on switches. One, two, and three. Columbia, light control, APU, looking good, over. Columbia, looking good. Because there's three APUs, so there's three switches for each APU. There's a switch for each option for each APU, that's what all those switches are for. There's three engines, but there are like nine buttons, it's like, because it's double stacked. Alright, there's your APU. APU, get deployed. Roger, light control. You are now internal power. Copy that. Internal power. All right. Now we look at the ascent profile. That's the actual profile for for the uh, for the ascent. I draw it yeah, over. Roger, light control. The aerial surface profile test. On those, on the MFDs, the uh, the far left and the far right have multiple ascent profiles. But there's the one that we're actually going to use, which is that curve I showed you. That is the zoomed out version. The one in the center is a close up zoomed in version of the actual, each segment of the ascent profile. We've moved the elevons and the speed brakes, now we're rotating the engines. Clear the shuttle. Three minutes. This is on control. Hydraulic yeah. complete. Columbia, Houston, copy that. Control Columbia, APU, power on. Turn it. We copy light control. Columbia, close the visor, please. We copy light control. Columbia, light control. APU, power off to inhibit. Copy that, Columbia. Alright. All we have left is, uh, the rest of the mission. <laughs> and, uh, that'll be the episode, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoy the new quality. Now at the minus 80 seconds and count you are for launch. That was the entire pre-launch for every shuttle from now on. So when I say just go back and redo pre-launch, that's what I'm talking about. Will the shuttle launch or will our missed button presses blast us into bits? Find out next time on Let's Play Space Shuttle Mission Simulator. This is Booyah Man 85 signing out. Have a good day.